Welcome to Accounting in Focus. Let's do the purchases first. Okay. Now, when you're doing when you're doing periodic, with periodic inventory, remember we're only tracking our inventory periodically, right? We're not doing it all the time. So with periodic, I've got my 1-3 purchase on 1-3, and we'll say that these were all on account, okay? So on 1-3, I've got purchases and I've got accounts payable. Okay, and I'll set up my debits and my credits. Okay, so on 1-3 I've got purchases and accounts payable <coughs> and the total amount was 150 times 2 so that's 300 and my accounts payable is 300. Okay. Now on 1-4, and we'll change this to the same color, on 1-4, okay, we sold inventory, right? We sold 100 units at $5. So when you make a sale, that's going to be accounts receivable, and my other account is going to be sales. You could use revenue, you could use merchandise sales. There's a lot of different ways that you could name that revenue account. I'm just going to call it sales. Now how much was my sale? I sold 100 units at five dollars each. So I'm going to debit accounts receivable 500 and I'm going to credit sales 500. Okay, remember debits and credits always have to balance. Now with periodic we do not have to adjust for inventory. Okay, under periodic we are not recording inventory, we're not recording costs of goods sold because we're not going to adjust that until the end of the month. Okay, so now let's go back to 1-9. I've got another purchase on 1-9. Okay, so let's see, I'll go back to my purchase color here. <coughs> okay, and this is going to be the same journal entry here, just the numbers are going to be different. So on 1-9 I've got purchases and I've got, I'm going to abbreviate it, accounts payable. Okay, and this time I purchased 100 units for $3 each, so that's 300 and 300. Okay, so I'm going to mark this one. I'm going to say 100 times 3 and up here I'm going to write 150 times 2. So that way, even though the numbers are the same, I want you to know where those numbers came from, okay, because it's a different calculation. So on the 12th, let's go back to purple, okay, on 112, we are going to do, let's see, on 112 we sold 150 units for seven dollars each. So let's see, that is 700 and half of 700 is 350, so that's going to be 1,050. Okay, so again, we've got, I'm going to abbreviate this time, accounts receivable and sales. And so that's going to be 1,050 and 1,050. Okay, and so that's how you would proceed through the whole month is that under periodic the only thing you have to record is you have to record the sale and then the asset that you're receiving in exchange for the sale either cash if you're paid in cash or accounts receivable okay so now let's let's clear that out Okay, so now let's do this again, but let's do it under perpetual. Okay, so under perpetual, let's put this up here. 
back to my pen. Under perpetual inventory, right? Think about what that word means. We are perpetually or constantly updating our inventory. Okay, so every time we purchase something, we're updating inventory. Every time we sell something, we're updating inventory. Think of barcodes, right? When you go to the store and they scan your item, they're not only recording the sale, but their computer systems are updating their inventory figures. Okay, so if you buy a jacket, they're pulling that jacket out of inventory. So under the perpetual system, okay, let's look at 1-3. So on 1-3, okay, well, what are we doing? Okay, we're purchasing inventory, right? So inventory, which is an asset, is increasing and accounts payable is increasing. So my debit and my credit. Okay, so again we said that was 100 un or 150 units times two dollars a piece. So that's 300 and 300. Okay, so in perpetual we're going to use inventory rather than purchases. Now let's look at what the sale on 1-4. Okay, on 1-4 we have a sale. Now remember, always tracking inventory. So we still have accounts receivable and sales, just like we did before. Okay, and that was 500. But we also have a second component. Okay, my second component, remember we have to track inventory. So my inventory is going down. Okay, and what's the offset for that? The offset for that, remember we said down here, cost of goods sold? We're going to use cost of goods sold. Okay, so notice this is basically one journal entry, right? There's two parts, but it's one journal entry. How much was my cost of goods sold? We said it was $100, right? So cost of goods sold is an expense, that's 100 Inventory is an asset. My inventory is decreasing, right, because we sold stuff, so we don't have that stuff anymore. So my inventory is decreasing by 100. Okay, let's do, let's see, let's do the purchase on 1.9. Okay, so on 1.9, we purchase more inventory. And we have accounts payable. Okay, so my inventory, let's see, that was 300 and 300. Okay, that's it. That's all that's required for the purchase. My inventory is going up. The amount that I owe my vendor went up. Okay, that's all you have to do. Now let's do the sale. Let's do the sale on the 12. Okay, so. Remember, I have to record the sale. It's going to be accounts receivable and sales. Okay, and that was 1,050. Remember, 150 times 7. So that was 1,050. 1,050. Okay. Now, remember the second piece, you have to record the transfer of the inventory. So cost of goods sold in inventory. Okay, and how much was it here? Remember, for the 12th, we said that it was $200 total. So my cost of goods sold is 200 and my inventory is 200 Okay, and that's it. Okay, so you'd have to do, you know, if you want to keep going with this, you do the purchase from 118 and the sale from 129 just like we did these ones.